Good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is the Town of Somers Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. The Vic, excuse me. I'm yes. sorry. Before we start, I just have to announce that Melissa DiBolito is joining us via Zoom due to um, an extraordinary circumstance. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is zon Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. The date is May 16th, 2023. Denise, would you please take the roll? Ms. DiBolito? Aye. Mr. Gio? Aye. Mr. Hardin? Aye. Mr. Newman? Here. Mr. Padovani? Here. Chairman Canistra? Here. Thank you. Uh, I ask everyone to stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're gonna go right into our agenda this evening. Um, as indicated by our zoning board secretary, there are five of us here in present. Uh, Melissa DiPolito is another board member who is online and we're expecting one more board member online. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll see if he can get can can come on with us. Okay, we're going to go to the first item on the agenda this evening. This is of Albert Totten. This is an application to renew a special exception use permit for an existing accessory apartment in the basement of an existing one-family dwelling in R40 residential district at 47 Stonehouse Road, Somers. Uh, sir, could you just, Mr. Totten? Yes, could you please come up to the microphone and just give us your name and address? My name is Albert Totten. My address is 47 Stonehouse Road, Somers, New York. Okay. And you're here to renew a special exception use permit. That's correct. Okay. Um, is there someone currently residing in the in the accessory apartment? Yes. Okay. And how many people live there? One. Just one person? Okay. I only rent it to one person at a time. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, question for Tom Toom of the building inspector. Tom, have you been out to the apartment and everything complies with what's indicated here on our checklist? That's correct. Okay. There's no violation or other issue. There, there are no issues, no violations. Okay. Have there been any complaints in regard to this apartment from neighbors? None that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. It appears from the checklist that it was built before 1992, is at least one acre, uh, less than 800 square feet, and one bedroom. Uh, it's 580 square, eight, square feet. Yeah. Good, well below. Yeah, so we're in good shape here. Any other questions for the applicant at this point in time? No, I have none. No, I'm good. No. no. Okay. Um, maybe what we should do is we should open this up to the public. Does anybody here wish to speak in regard to this application or anyone online wish to speak in regard to this application? If you do and you're at home or someplace else, you can use one of the numbers posted on the uh on your television screen, just call in and uh, we'll be happy to hear any comments uh, that you might have. And we'll just leave it open for a minute to see if anybody calls in. There's an indication on here. It says the host would like you to unmute. So we want somebody who's muted to unmute. That's me. Thank you. It's, o it's okay. Vic, I think you're good. I don't I don't see that anybody's... Don't see anyone? Yep. Okay. Um, any further comments from the board? Any questions of the applicant? No, I have no. 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 Sir, did you have anything else you'd like to say in regard to this application? Nothing at all. Nothing? Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, I think I'll uh, entertain a uh, type of action. Type two. Second. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. DiPolito? Aye. Ms. Gio? Uh, Mr. Aye. Gio, I'm sorry. Mr. Hardin? <laughs> Aye. Um, Tom, Mr. Newman? Aye. Mr. Padovani? Aye. Chairman Canistra? Aye. We have a motion as to whether we're going to uh, renew the special exception use permit. I move we re renew this special use permit for the next seven years. Second. Second. Ms. DiPolito? Aye. Mr. Gio? Aye. Mr. Hardin? Aye. Mr. Newman? Aye. Mr. Padovani? Aye. Chairman Canistra? Aye. Congratulations, sir. Your application has been granted for the next seven years. You'll have to come back to us after that time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank have you. a good night. Good evening. <clears throat> We're going to go to the second item on the agenda this evening. This is the application of Glenn Albright. This is an application to renew a special exception use permit for an existing accessory apartment in a detached accessory of an existing one family dwelling in an R80 residential district at nine route 100 Somers. Is someone here to represent the applicant? Yes, I'm online. Hello, hello, Hi. sir. Can you please give us your name and address? Yes, Glenn Albright, nine route 100 Somers. Okay. And is the accessory apartment currently rented? Yes. Okay. How many people reside there? One. Just one? Okay. He's a 9-11 first responder. I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, he's a 9-11 first responder. Okay. Um, and to our building inspector, Tom Tuma. Tom, have you been out to uh, inspect the apartment and is all in compliance? Yes, I have, and all is in compliance. Do we have any complaints from neighbors or anybody else regarding this accessory apartment? Uh, none. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Sir, it looks like your property is 5.7 acres. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Can't see my neighbors. Right. <laughs> Okay, any other questions of the applicant at this time before we go out to nope. the public? Was it a general quick question? I, I'd say, I know on the checklist it says that it was constructed prior to April 1st, 1992. Usually it would say the year. Do we know what what year the building was built? 1988. 88, thank you. Okay, let's take this out to the public. Paul, if you could put the phone numbers up on the screen. Um, is there anybody here who wishes to speak in regard to this application or anyone from the general public who wishes to call in? We'd be happy to hear any comments you have. We'll leave uh, public comment open for another minute or so. I think we're good, Vic. Okay. Uh, any further questions or comments from the board? No. Nope. No. Nope. No. Okay. Uh, does the applicant, uh, Mr. Albright, do you wish to say anything further in regard to your application? No. Nope. Thank you. Okay. I'll entertain a motion as to the type of action. Motion type two. Second. Ms. DiPolito? Aye. Mr. Gio? Aye. Mr. Hardin? Aye. Mr. Newman? Aye. Mr. Padovani? Aye. Chairman Canistra? Aye. Thank you. Can we have a motion whether we're going to renew the special exception use permit? I move we renew the special exception uh, permit for seven years. Second. Ms. DiPolito? Aye. Mr. Gio? Aye. Mr. Hardin? Aye. 
Mr. Newman? Aye. Mr. Padovani? Aye. Chairman Canistra? Aye. Congratulations, you. sir. Your application has been granted and uh, it is good for the next seven years. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. <clears throat> We're going to go on to item three on the agenda. This is the application of Jonathan and Melissa Chiotis and Esmeralda Tamez. This is an application to renew a special exception use permit for an existing accessory apartment in the basement of an existing one family dwelling in an R40 residential district at 56 Wilner Road, Somers. Is someone here to represent the applicant? Yes, me, Melissa Chiotis. Okay. And I assume that 56 Wilner Road is your address? Yes. Okay. Uh, is the apartment currently occupied? Yes, it is. Okay. How many people reside there? Uh, one, my mother. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, Tom Tuma, our building inspector. Tom, have you been out there to inspect the apartment and all is in compliance? Yes, I have, and all is in compliance. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any complaints uh, regarding this apartment from neighbors or anyone else? No complaints. Okay. Further questions from the board regarding this application? I do not. Nope. Looks no. good according to the checklist. Yep. Pre 1992, less than 800 square feet, and one bedroom. No. I find this checklist very helpful. Very helpful. This is really a, this is a great idea because it kind of hones in, summarizes, as opposed to going to the code every single time. We can just look right here for the summary. It's really good. Okay. I have to give kudos to Tom on this one. Okay. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So um, I think we're going to go out to the public on this. Anybody here wish to speak in regard to this application or if anyone online wishes to speak? Um, Please uh, call in. We'll just leave the uh, leave it open for a minute or so. See if anybody wants to speak in regard to this application. I think we're good, Vic. Okay. All right, so we're going to go to a vote. Uh, can I have a motion as to the type of action? Type two. Second. Second. Ms. DiPolito? Ms. DiPolito? Melissa, you're on Sorry. mute. I was on mute. Aye. Mr. Gio? Aye. Mr. Hardin? Aye. Mr. Newman? Aye. Mr. Padovani? Aye. Chairman Canistra? Aye. Uh, can we have a motion as to whether we're going to uh, renew the special exception use permit? I'll make a motion to accept it as presented to the town board, I mean, the zoning board, in the next seven years. Second. Ms. DiPolito? Aye. Mr. Gio? Aye. Mr. Harding? Aye. Mr. Newman? Aye. Mr. Padovani? Aye. And Chairman Canistra? Aye. Uh, congratulations, ma'am. Your application has been approved and uh, it is good for the next seven years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Um, I'm just going to jump for a minute to item five on the agenda of uh, 39 Cypress Lane. Uh, Denise, this is still a carryover application to next month, so we're not going to hear anything this evening. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. So that, that item is off the agenda. Okay. So we're going to go to the uh, last item on the agenda this evening, that of w Victor and Deborah Wu. Uh, this is an application for a side yard area variance for an existing in-ground pool accessory in an R80 residential district at 8 Silver Springs Court, Katona. Uh, this matter was heard last month by the board, uh, and we were trying to make a determinate, well, we were, we were trying to make a determination as to 
whether we were going to um, hear this application. There were two votes. One was a motion to hear the application because it was timely. There were six I votes, so it was determined to be timely. There was then a vote to determine if the application currently before us was materially different, um, it being materially different, and then it could be heard by the board if it was the same, we could not. There were th three nays and three A votes, three, three I votes, so it was a tie. Uh, <clears throat> there was then um, some discussion as to the tie, was it a denial or a non-action? Um, <clears throat> Let me say this, um, and we have gotten some, I've had some further discussions from town council. Uh, we have also received a, a letter from Whitney Singleton, who represents the neighbor next door. <clears throat> um, let me, I, I will discuss with the board uh, the discussions that I had with town council in regard to this application. Um, Town Council indicated to me that uh, if this was considered a variance vote, we can amend the vote and re-vote, and we have 62 days to do that from the filing with the, uh, with the clerk's office because we did not have a definitive vote. Um, Should the board decide to proceed that way, we only need a majority of the members voting to proceed that way. Oh, do we have Mr. Lansky? Yep. Yes, sorry. Okay. Let's give Mr. Lansky a moment here. Hello, Bart, I'm glad you could join us. Um, for everybody on, on for everybody uh, here at the meeting and online, Mr. Lansky is our seventh board member who has just joined us via Zoom. And Bart, can you hear us? Is everything okay? Yes, I can hear you fine. Thank you. Right. And Denise, I think you've also determined uh, for Mr. Lansky due to the uh, extenuating circumstances that uh, he's he's eligible to uh, Zoom into us. That is correct. Okay. May I ask what the basis of the extenuating circumstances are? Um, at the end of the day, both Melissa and Bart had to tell me why they were unable to um, attend the meeting um, in person. And I've been told by our town attorney that I do not have to reveal that information. Um, and if I see that it's an extra extraordinary circumstance that I can allow them to zoom in. And you're making that determination, Denise? I am. Okay. You you realize, of course, that's not consistent with New York State's video conferencing laws. You know what, Whitney? That is something I was okay. told. That's by, okay. That's fine. I, I've been doing this for quite a while now, and it's Roland Baroni who has indicated that if they have an extraordinary circumstance, they are able to join us via Zoom. They are able to vote however they can't count toward the quorum. Correct. I, I got that part, but I disagree with what the extra, extraordinary circumstances are. Okay. And Mr. Singleton, you can always, you know, you know, make that argument or complaint, but I think for right now, we're going to proceed. That's fine. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm just going to uh, just start again on this because I, I want uh, Mr. Lansky to hear everything that, you know, I, I've said just so we're very clear and we've got a full board here. So hopefully we can you know, resolve this issue here. Well, at least re resolve something. So uh, let me just repeat again, in last month's um, meeting, the Wu application was before us. The board took two votes. The first vote was a motion to hear the application because it was timely. It was some, some uh, discussion as to whether the application was made timely. Six members on the board all voted aye in the affirmative. So it was determined to be timely. Second motion was uh, to hear the application because it was materially different, meaning you can't bring the same application multiple times. It has to be materially different. 
There were three nay votes and three aye votes. So it was a tie. Uh, and then the board had decided to seek legal counsel as to whether the 3 3 tie was an act, what acts as a denial or a non action. Um, I did want to tell everyone that I did speak with town councils at some length about this. I believe some documentation has been provided to uh, the Woos and the neighbor next door. Uh, I do have a letter from Mr. Singleton uh, dated May 16th, um, <laughs> also regarding this issue. Um, and you know, quite honestly, I'm going to you know discuss uh, my discussion with town council, Jerry Riley. Um, he makes two points in reviewing everything here, including Mr. Singleton's letter. He said that um, if this was a variance vote, and I go, I, Mr. Singleton may agree or disagree with that, but if this was a variance vote, uh, we have the right to amend the vote and revote. Um, it would have to be re-noticed and the vote would have to take place at next month's June meeting. Uh, only need a uh, majority of the board to vote in the affirmative to grant a revote. And I guess the idea of a revote would be all seven members would then be available to vote on the issue. Um, I also discussed with town council, you know, uh, Mr. Singleton makes the argument that this is not a variance vote. Jerry Riley thought it was a variance vote because the underlying action was a variance. But Jerry said, if you do not want to consider it a variance vote, then because it's not a variance vote, then this is a non-action and we can rehear the matter at next month's meeting. We'd also have to re-notice. So either way we go on this, we'd have to re-notice. Now, of course, the board may decide that it doesn't want to entertain either of these, uh, the re-vote uh, or the non-action. So that's what we have before us at this point in time. Um, I don't even know that we have to hear from council. Do we wanna hear from council as to their opinion in regard to this? You know, I'm usually pretty open, but, you know, I, I usually like to hear from everyone in regard to their position on these matters. Um, so let, let me, I mean, this is not, <clears throat> this isn't, an, you know, a, no, a notice meeting. So the board is basically making a decision here as to whether we're going to re-vote on this matter or whether we're going to rehear this matter. Could be yay or nay. Um, maybe I'll, Mr. Crusoe, would you like to comment in regard to this? If you want to come up, if, if you'd like to speak, or you may have no comment at all. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. I think the uh, the board is is well versed in the issues, um, and you've certainly heard enough from the respective lawyers. So I don't want to take your time up tonight on yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I don't want to do, yeah. I don't want to re-argue. You know, no. we understand where the pool is and yeah. the, and the and the and the problems. We understand all that. I'm just looking for any comments you may have on the vote before the board this evening. Yeah, I, I do think that, you know, when you look at the totality of the application, the nature of the relief that the woos are seeking, um, we invoke the board's appellate jurisdiction uh, for an area variance. And I think that's pretty clear. So our position is that we made an application based on the TUMA letter from October 25, 2022. Uh, invoking the appellate jurisdiction. And we think this is a variance and a variance vote, if you'll call it that, but that's up to the board, but that's our position. That it is a variance vote and not something else. Yeah, we believe that that's consistent. Right. So, And that position would be then the board would determine whether we're going to amend the vote or revote on this matter. Yeah. After proper notice, and it would occur next month. Yeah, I mean, the board has gotten counsel and can make its own decision, of course, but that's our position. If you'd like to hear anything more from me, I'm happy to elaborate, but I think the board has, you know, a, a firm grip on its, you know, on its tack, if you will, uh, on its course. Okay. So, okay. But thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Thank it. you. Thank you. Mr. Singleton, would you like to comment in regard to, um, Sure. So the, and, 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 and let me start out by saying that I appreciate you trying to, you know, delineate and to uh, distill the issues before your board. I agree with everything that your counsel, whether it was Roland Baroni or Jerry Riley, has informed you. Um, I do think that the meeting needs to be re-noticed. Your minutes state that uh, the application is postponed until further notice. 
there has been no notice. So I would advise that it is appropriate for your board not to take any action or any motion uh, at this meeting, since it's not properly noticed. I agree that you can reconvene in June and you can make a determination on the issue of whether or not the application is substantially different. And depending upon what your decision is in that matter, it will dictate whether or not the application would go to a vote on the merits of the variance application. So you have the ability to do so. I just, I, I would agree with your counsel that it is not prudent to take any action at this meeting and to defer until there's further notice. Okay, that's not exactly what our council said. Our council said that um, we can make a decision as to whether we're going to amend or revote tonight, or we can make a decision um, uh, in regard to whether we're going to rehear the matter. So that would be something that we can make a decision on, but either way the board decided it would have to be Notice, and we would meet next month. All right, and, and in that regard, I will just refer you to the statute, which is it, which is also in my letter, and that the revote provisions of two sixty seven of the town law are specifically relegated to one instance when you're voting on a resolution for a variance. Your last vote was not for a resolution on the variance; it was on the sufficiency of the application itself to whether or not your board should even entertain it. So I do not believe that the rehearing provisions of 267 apply to the preliminary issue of whether or not uh, whether or not you can have a rehearing within 62 days. So, and, and, and here, um, in regard to a revote, we do have 62 days to do that, which would require us to do that by the June meeting. So are you arguing that this is not a variance application and that we have something other than a variance application and therefore we would go to a rehearing next month? Is that what your that is that your argument? What 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 I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is your board made a determination because section 267 does not apply to that preliminary determination as to whether or not it is a substantially different application. The provisions of 267 do not apply, and you are relegated to the provisions of the uh, espoused in the Tall Pines case, which says a tie vote is a no vote. That's what the case law says yeah. for this type of situation. Your, what, what your counsel is advising you is that you have within your jurisdiction the ability to have a rehearing within 62 days. Your counsel was under the impression, I believe was under the impression that that was a vote on the resolution for the variance and it was not, it was on a preliminary matter. So 267 does not apply. Yeah. Our, our you, you, oh, my position is you've already made a determination. Okay, yeah, our, our counsel. So, Differs with your opinion on that. I mean, okay. we can yeah. we can we can disagree. You right, right. you have you have intelligent counsel. I'm not I'm I'm right. not saying that they're 100 correct or incorrect. Okay. Can I, let me just ask a question. So, sure. um, in reading Jerry's memo, uh, he is saying that the board has the option to, has some options here, or the board can take no action at all, and the vote would. And the three-three tie would 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 be a denial, right? According to Jerry, we need four members to vote to either um, to revote or not to revote. Assuming we assume, assuming we're taking the position that this was a variance decision, right? Uh, because it was a three-three tie, we can a majority of the board. We've got all seven of us here, so four have to vote to either want to re-vote on this matter because we were missing one member in last month's meeting or not to re-vote on it. And we, if we vote not to re-vote on it, the matter is done. Uh, if, we, if we decide or to re-vote on it, four members saying, yes, I want to have a full board vote, then we have to notice it 
and we'll be back in June and then we vote. That still doesn't mean we're going to. That just means that we're going to hear the variants. Doesn't mean we're going to grant the variants, obviously. Now, so, so the only way that would move forward then was it was that if a board member tonight made a motion to revote. Right. Would have to make a motion if to no, if no one did that, the matter would be closed. But the matter would be would be right. We have to have a motion, a second, and then a vote. Got it. I mean, I think we should have a vote one way or another. You can make a, a motion not to have the revote. <laughs> you know, I can go either way. Um, now, as Jerry Riley indicated, if um, we do not consider what we are voting on to be a variance, that means it was a non-action. Okay. So, um, and if it was a non-action, then uh, we can rehear the matter. We have to notice it, and then we can rehear the matter, which means we open it up once again. We we rehear it. What that means. So, <clears throat> so those are the uh, options and pending votes before us. Um, any comments from anybody? No, I'm good. I would say, if you can hear me, um, this is Mr. Lansky speaking. Yeah, that it, it doesn't feel like we voted on a variance. Um, Great. And I would also say, Mr. Singleton, if you could let me speak, I'd appreciate it. Um, it it felt like we were voting on something procedural rather than a variance. Um, I would. I would prefer that the entire board has an opportunity to vote. Um, and so I would move for a rehearing to the extent that uh, we feel that's appropriate. Okay, so that's your position on it. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you that's the way it feels. It didn't feel like I, I was voting on a variance. It felt like I was voting on a jurisdictional issue. Versus you know, I did ask Jerry Riley that too. I said, is it a variance? And he said, well, the underlying issues of variance so, you know, you could argue it's a variance. Now, you know, we could take or leave that. And, you know, I certainly respect your opinion on this part. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I have the right answer. I'm just saying, um, you know, sometimes I'll speak with a little bit more assertively. This, this one, you know, it just didn't feel like we were voting on variance. It felt like we were voting on, on threshold or jurisdictional issues. And, and we were going to get to a variance vote if we had got, got through those first things. Um, but I, I'm in favor of having, we had a 3-3 vote. I think we have seven people and I'm in favor of, of having a vote by everybody. Um, and, you know, I lean towards letting matters be heard. Are you talking about re-voting on the jurisdictional matter? Yes. Okay. And then if that, if we get past that, if the board agrees, uh, and we get past that, then the, the applicant would have on a variance. And it's a substantial variance. It's not, it's no slam dunk for nobody. Right. So it comes down to the interpretation of whether or not we were voting on a variance or or strictly a, a, a procedural. One, one would allow us to simply re-vote, and the other would require a full rehearing of the matter. Right. Correct. And we have different interpretations of that. Right. Um, I think our, our council suggests that it was a variance. He, he did suggest that, but then he also said, you know, an argument could be made. I mean, he was kind of like it could be made either way. So, you know, he Jerry was not definitive either way. He said it's really, you know, I, he goes, I could argue either way, but I would leave it to the board. Um, uh, I'm in that camp too. I could I could see this either way, right? In terms what in terms of whether whether the sum and substance is a variance, uh, or whether it's it's a mere threshold. Um, but but in terms of my feeling, I was leaning towards this being a procedural that that last vote being more procedural than substantive. I mean, I think it's a more conservative approach to take the position that it was a you know not a variance, it was a non-action and we just rehear the matter. I mean, to go over the material again, I, you know, <laughs> somewhat repetitive. I think we know the material very well, but if, uh, if, 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 if the applicant and, and others want to comment, I, I guess we could rehear it. Um, 
it's not as expeditious as we just could, doing a, it, a revote, but you know, we have, we, to do enter, it, we have to do it. We could enter the, the existing materials into record and ask that the applicant and um, any opposition uh, only bring new materials in um, and, and or give certain time limits so that it's expeditious. Yeah, I'd prefer not to have three hours of arguing the same points we have before. I mean, it's kind of fruitless. I think we know the points. We're just trying to get through these procedural issues to you know, see whether we're going to hear it or not. Anybody else on the board wish to comment in regard to this? No, good. No. Paul, hear it. Melissa, yeah, just, just one minute. The, yeah. Let me go through everybody, Whitney. I just want to hear from everybody. Melissa, do you have any further comments on this? I don't know which way you're falling on it. I, like I said, I think I'm kind of falling on maybe a just to rehear the matter. Um, I'm pretty much falling to not rehear the matter. Are you you are you falling more along the lines to uh, that this was a variance vote and to revote it? Whether it was a variance vote or we were voting on one of the factors, that factor was necessary to move forward and we've clearly, and we voted. So I would let that stand as our decision. Okay. So you want to let the decision stand as is with a, a tie. So, okay. Well, which is a non-action, which is a, a, a denial basically. Which is a denial. Right. Okay. Can I make can I make one other point, Chairman? It's it's. Well, I, but, wait, wait, Whitney, it's, let me just finish. I just want to Whitney. I want to finish with the board first. Sure. Anybody else want to comment? I'm I'm leaning towards a rebel, yeah. since I haven't voted the last two times on this matter. Right, right. I mean, I, I would like to have everybody vote on the matter. You know, I always like to hear all opinions. I, I'm kind of in the in the same camp as Bart. There, I, I, you know, I like to be open with, you know documents we have, everybody sees everything, so we get to the best answer or the right answer. So I will say, even though I had no comment before, if we hear this all over again, as long as it is short, <laughs> I have no problem about hearing this all over again, the short version, okay? I really do not feel like staying here until one o'clock in the morning. Well, and listen, I, I, I certainly understand, listen, We've heard from the hardships right. from both sides right. here, and it's a shame it hasn't somehow been resolved, you know, so we understand that. So this is just a matter of, so when we talk about a rehearing, we're going to open it up to public comment. Somebody wants to come in and say something, but yes, we have all the documentation. We know it. I would hope that everyone would give a synopsis, a concise. Uh, right, as long as it's all new. Yeah, but, you know, we don't have to hear every single thing, see every photo, and you know, because we, I think we know it pretty well. And like I said, even if we decide to hear the variance, if we get to that point, doesn't mean we're going to grant the variance, you know. So this is just still, we're still kind of at step one here. Um, so Vic, could you just um, repeat again in your conversation uh, with counsel? Absolutely. He determined. Okay, uh, Jerry. What, what, what was the non-action out outcome? Okay, here. So, so, so Jer Jerry, Jerry said two things to me. One, he said. You have to decide whether this was a vote for a variance or not. If it was a vote for a variance, okay, on a vote on a variance, a tie is a denial unless the board within 62 days decides it wants to amend their vote or revote. So we have the option to amend or revote. So that's that's part one. So if it was a variance vote, now we were voting on to hear the was the application timely? Was it materially different? Is that part of the variance or is that something else? Okay, now in Mr. Singleton's letter, and Jerry addressed this also, let's assume that the board says, okay, well, maybe this wasn't a variance vote. Maybe this was some other procedural matters or something else. Jerry said then it wouldn't be a revote. You would notice the matter, and then next month we would rehear the matter, you know, just like, you know, you're starting over basically. Because in that scenario, the 3-3 three, three is a non-action? No, because that's correct. Because the 3-3, three, three, that's exactly right. In a variance vote, the 3-3 three, three is a denial unless we elect or decide to re-vote and we have to give notice. If it's something other than a variance, it's a non-action, meaning nothing happened. 
you know, it's 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 pending. And we have to rehear the matter and vote. In either way, we have to re-notice and come back here. So that was my discussion with Jerry. Could I just ask, um, I tend to agree, uh, you know, again, I, I came into this that the 3-3 three, three was a denial. So no further action was necessary, uh, was my initial uh, gut on this. Um, could I, Melissa, based on your comment earlier, does the fact that a 3-3 a three, three tie vote <clears throat> that wasn't a vote on a variance, but on a procedural matter or a jurisdictional matter, the uh, council's opinion that it is a non-action, does that change your perspective at all? No, because if, if the, we were voting on a procedural matter and we need that procedural piece to move forward and we and it's not a variance and we have that tie vote and that tie vote is a denial, then we don't have that procedural piece to then rehear. Well, Jerry said, if this was a non-variance vote, then you have a non-action. The only way that this tie vote would be a denial is if we were voting on a variance. So if we didn't vote on a variance, then we have a non-action because we had a 3-3. Only in a variance vote is the 3-3 a denial. This is according to town council, Jerry, Jerry Riley. So I think if, I think if we come down on the side of that, this was not a variance vote, we have a non-action and I think we're forced to rehear the matter. And Chairman. I think that's the way I would be leaning at this point in time, but so. Chairman, uh, I, I apologize for interrupting. Okay. No, go ahead. Go I, ahead Mr. I, Singleton. I, I, I have, I have another meeting. Um, Whatever your board chooses to do in that in that case, it, it's it's up to your board. And you know, I, I don't agree a hundred percent or disagree a hundred percent with Jerry's interpretation. I would I would point out though that there should be one thing that you verify. Um, <clears throat> I just looked in your town code. You haven't adopted a video conferencing local law, and the state open public meetings law does not allow you to vote remotely unless the board unless your town board expressly adopts that law. So it does not appear as though the town of Somers has done so. So I just caution you as to what the effect is of your vote. Okay. All right, thank you very much and I'll see you next month. Okay, thank you, Mr. Singleton. Thank you. Um, since we've heard from Mr. Singleton, Mr. Crusoe, is there anything else you wish to say in regard to this? I've, I've let Mr. Singleton kind of jump in here and there and I, I want to hear from everybody. Oh, I appreciate the opportunity to come back. Um, it, there's no easy way to cabin your analysis of the issues in terms of how your vote is classified, how the board shapes it. When I answered the question as to whether I think this is a variance decision for the board or a, a variance vote, if you will, um, we're using some vernacular that may not line up 100% with what's in the statute, but our position is we're here for an area variance. Yes, the decision that you're making is strictly limited to legal issues. All the things that you heard us ramble on for a long time about, but those are part and parcel of a variance determination overall. You don't get to a substantive decision without the antecedent. They're part of a variance decision overall. So our position is, you know, I, I accept what Mr. Singleton has put on the record about the matter of tall trees case, which is the law, which is if the board and it is, is acting on a, an appellate issue and there's a three, three vote with members in absentia, uh, it's a default denial. So I understand that area of law. Mr. Singleton has stated it correctly, but Again, I think the board has to look a little bit more holistically, take a 30,000 foot view of this. This is an appeal, it is a variance. Uh, there isn't any authority that I'm aware of, and Mr. Singleton is the, you know, the town attorney here and other matters. I'm not aware of any authority that says 
you can break down sections of your voting into different pieces and, and categorize them differently. And that takes them out of the operation of certain statutes and makes them something different. You have original jurisdiction, you have appellate jurisdiction. We're here on the latter. It's still part of a variance, even though it is one component of your decision-making process as a whole. So that's our position. And obviously it's up to the board as to how it wants to proceed and how you think it's prudent to do so. Okay, so your argument is that this was a variance vote at last month's meeting, and it was not something other than that. Now with a variance vote, we have to then make a decision whether we're just going to revote it. If it's not a variance vote and if it's something else, then as I stated, that would be a rehearing. So you're arguing for the revote as opposed to a rehearing. Well, however you see fit to proceed. Again, we know you didn't reach the merits of the application, so it wasn't that you were deciding the merits of a variance at that meeting, although that was a decision that was in furtherance of it. You know, we couldn't get to that merits decision without a jurisdictional decision. So, yes, so we think it's still part of a broader variance decision. That's our position. So okay. I thank the board for giving this some hard thought, though. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, we're, we're really trying to work hard to get to the proper legal decision here. I think everybody is. And uh, the matters are somewhat complex. So, okay. I guess my question would be looking at the tall trees case. Um, they are saying that when the quorum of the board is present and they participate in proceedings on a variance application and they vote and there's a tie vote that doesn't go in the direction um, of granting the application, that is not a non-action. But that case is saying that it is in effect a denial. So how are we differentiating this case before us from that legal precedent? Yeah, Jerry says that um, town code of New York State um, it says if an affirmative vote of a majority of all members of the board is not attained on a motion or resolution to grant a variance, et cetera, et cetera, the board may amend the failed motion or resolution and vote on the amended motion or resolution within the time allotted, that being 62 days without being I, I subject would... to the rehearing process. So what that what that means is is that you know we can decide since we you know right now if we let it stand it's a denial there's no question about it but we have the the option to decide if we want to if this was a variance vote to revote it now if you continue on down from what Jerry provided us in the Tall Trees Construction Corp um, this is where Jerry gets this is in the the matter of Alper Restaurant Inc versus the Town of Copeg Zoning Board. Um, in this matter, court affirmed the Supreme Court decision that a 2-2 vote issued for a special use permit was a non-action because there was no majority vote and the ZBA was exerting its original jurisdiction over the applicant's special use permit. This enabled the ZBA to vote again on the same matter and grant it with a 3-2 vote. Um, and that is just distinguishing between something an, other than a variance vote and a special use permit which right. is something different right something other than a variance vote right so it seems the variance vote it's it, we can't rehear it it's it's not a re if it's a variance vote it's not a rehearing we have to decide whether we're going to revote because we can because we had a tie uh we have 62 days which is going to put us till right after the time frame of the june meeting if we decide it wasn't a variance vote and then we have to, and we want to have the full board vote on this, then we have to do a, a rehearing next month. Either one has to be noticed. I mean, my position is, I guess I could argue either way on this, but I would like to have all seven members voting one way or another. Yeah, or nay. That's that's my position on it. Um, Bart, you want to say? Yeah, and Vic, if I may, um, what, what I feel is different to answer Melissa's question a little bit, uh, from my personal opinion is I see the law differentiating between uh, something which has been fully heard on the merits and something which hasn't been fully heard on the merits. And so the variance vote for me is everyone's came and stated their case and they're asking for a variance, which is something beyond the status quo. Um, 
the special permit case is something which is being renewed and it's the status quo. Um, so I, I differentiate those because you have some type of right, I wouldn't say entitlement to the status quo versus a, a variance application, which is an e exception more. Um, and so for me, that's a, a little different. And I don't see us necessarily as a variance application um, just because we're only looking. We were only looking at a limited aspect of it, whether, whether it was materially different. So it wasn't fully heard for me. But but that said, I would. I always favor having an entire board hear things on the merits, um, and that's because of my background. Um, and so that's where I lean, and I would make a motion that we we hear this matter um, in June and uh, without specifically going on the record as to whether it's a variance vote or not, I would just move that we rehear the matter in June. Okay. Do you, do, are you actually making a motion at this point in time? Are you saying that you would make that motion after? <laughs> well, I, I, I floated a balloon. I wanted to, you know. <laughs> what was that? Because I, I'm going to make a motion. If, if nobody says no, then I'll, I'm going to make the motion. I think we have to delineate if it's a variance vote or not. Because if it's a variance vote, we're voting to amend and revote and not rehear. If it's not a variance vote, then we're voting to rehear. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, That's you can make a motion, I guess, which provides the assumption underneath. If you want to rehear it, then you're basically saying it wasn't a variance and you want to rehear it. I mean, I, so, so yeah. I would be willing right. to make a motion that it is a variance vote and to not rehear and to not amend and revote. Okay. So, I'm sorry. So, so Melissa, she's making a motion. So you're making a motion to, I'm sorry, give me that. I'm, I'm sorry. So I wanna... would be willing to make a motion that this, it, that our vote in April was a variance vote and to not amend and revote. Okay. So is that your official motion at this point in time? If you want it to be, it can. <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you're saying you, you're thinking about that motion or you're actually <laughs> making that motion. I don't no, want to speak I'm, for you. I'm willing to make that motion if we're ready to vote. Okay. Any, you want to have any other discussion or you want to start voting? Vote. Let's start voting. Um, okay, let's start voting. Okay, so Melissa, can you give that to us one more time? Yes, the April vote was a variance vote, and we will not amend and revote. I'll second that motion. Okay, Ms. DiPolito. Hi. Mm, sorry. Mr. Gio. Hi. Mr. Hardin. Nay. Mr. Lansky. Nay. Mr. Newman. Aye. Mr. Padovani. Nay. Chairman Canestra. Nay. Okay, so that motion has been denied. Um, I, I would move yeah. that. That Sorry. means now that we would have to re-notice and amend and revote. Right here. Well, it depends. I mean, you could we could still make a motion that it's a variance and to revote. You made a you made a motion for a variance and not to revote. Um, we could have a motion right. for a variance and to revote, or we could have a motion to rehear or not rehear. I, I would move that it's not a variance vote and that we have a rehearing i second that let's repeat that one more time please bart sure um i move that it's not a variance vote and i move for a rehearing miss dipolito no <clears throat> Mr. Gio? Aye. Mr. Hardin? Aye. Mr. Lansky? 
Aye. Mr. Pad uh, Mr. Newman. May. Mr. Padovani. Aye. Mr. Canestra. Chairman Canestra. Aye. So we have five votes in favor, two votes against. So what we have voted for is a that this was a not a variance, a non-action, and we're going to rehear the matter next month. And Denise, you'll have to notice notice this for next month's meeting that we're going to rehear the matter. Yes, and I know Mike Caruso is in the room. We're going to have to move on this quickly um, because of the time constraint, and we are meeting a week earlier than normal. Yes, so let me let me. Normally, we meet third Tuesday of every month. Next month, we meet on the second Tuesday, which is Tuesday, June thirteenth, seven thirty in this room. And the reason we're doing that is because I believe tax certs are occurring the following Thursday. As far as following, no, it's actually it's actually it's actually early voting and we can't use the vote. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Right. Right. Okay. 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 So that's, so that item is going to be on the agenda uh, for next month's meeting. So, okay. Um, so that ends the Wu application for Wu issue or application for this evening. Um, last item on the agenda then is a review of the April 18, 2023 minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review them? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, any changes, comments, or concerns? No. 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 Okay. I'm just going to uh, approve yes. by voice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. You opposed? He's on a delay. I think he's, he's on delay. I think it was an I, a okay. delayed I. <laughs> okay. I. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, any abstentions? No. Okay. So the min minutes for April 18, 2023 are approved. Any other matters we want to discuss before we adjourn? I'm good. Nope. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess we'll look into Mr. Singleton's objection to our voting. Um, we'll just make sure that was all good because in order to, uh, He's going to be involved in this case when we rehear it next month. Yes, yep. he, we can speak to town council. He just asserted that we couldn't vote tonight, so we okay, to clear that up. I will forty. Think, yes, yeah, Denise. One thing I'll just make mention to you also. Um, I will speak to Jerry Riley. Uh, Mr. Singleton made an argument that he didn't feel we could vote on this matter, uh, that it had to be noticed, but it was really a, a decision on whether the board's going to hear it or not. So uh, he also said, uh, made reference to uh, the New York State tele teleconferencing for oh, public uh, meetings, the voting yeah. and things like that. Whether we could vote. So let's just make sure we're. Yeah, we'll speak with uh, Jerry Riley on both those issues. Vic, um, that conversation should be with Roland Baroni, not Jerry. Okay. Yeah. If you think he's more versed in it, sure. Well, Roland was the one who told me all this. <laughs> oh, okay. So I think it should go back to Roland. Okay. That would be fine. You'll speak with him. Yes, I could speak with him. So that's teleconferencing uh, regarding the voting. And the other issue was the, um, oh, whether we could, uh, the uh, propriety of voting tonight. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. We could follow up with town council on those two matters. Okay, anything further anybody would like to discuss? No. 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 Okay, so um, being nothing further, as mentioned, our next meeting is June 13th, which is the second Tuesday, which is unusual, uh, but that will be the date and the meeting will be held here at 7.30 p.m. Okay, thank you everyone and have a good evening. Good night. Thank you. Have a good evening.